Okay, shut up, so let me get through this on the first one. <laughs> hmm, welcome to the... Fuck. <laughs> Mmm, uh. <laughs> welcome to the pod, everyone. In honor of this spooky season, what? we ask you to fasten your drool buckets and strap on your testicle clamps, because today on No Accounting for Taste, Kyle the skinned kitten Canadian and Shane the sex psycho Taurus are going to be dissecting something a little uncomfortable, something a little strange. That feeling in the pit of your stomach when the roller coaster drops, the moment when the hit when the hair on the back of your neck stands up because your dad locked the door to his office and started listening to Private Dancer by Tina Turner again. <laughs> I hope I hope you brought a change of undies because today on the pod we intend to give we intend to give you a fright so nice you shit your pants twice a scare so big you wet your legs with piss and jizz today on the podcast get ready because we're talking about everything from Jason to Freddy that's right my sh little shitty kittens today on the pod we're talking about being scared <laughs> it's the creepy organ music how oh, you're good with words you know that man I think the gym is dumb. Did Rachel was, walk in the room? Of course I've eaten up Baconator. Man, if you ain't doing CrossFit, you can get cross buff. You're right. Shuffle. A long burger's not the worst idea I've ever heard. That's your sitcom right there as a, as a, as a Mr. Fix-It-All who just can't fix his heart. We will not be defending Atlantic City. No accounting for taste. If it's something that somebody loves, let's try and celebrate it instead of uh, shitting on it. Thank you to our sponsors at Trade Coffee. Trade is the easiest way to get your very best tasting coffee delivered fresh when you need it. Uh, they, and you got nothing to lose because Trade Coffee guarantees you will love your first bag. If not, they'll work with you to replace it for free. So, if you want to support small businesses and brew the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's time to try Trade Coffee right now. Trade is offering our listeners a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash NAFT. That's drinktrade.com slash NAFT for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. Oh, buddy. So what are we talking about today, Canane? <laughs> Scary stuff. Getting scared. It's fun, <laughs> isn't it? Frights for fun. <clears throat> Oh man, I, uh, I I love it. We're we're recording this on October. What is it? October tenth. <clears throat> yep. And uh, yeah. yeah, ninth, 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 ninth. Okay, I love it. I love getting scared. I uh, I enjoy it. I go. I've been watching scary movies this month. Me and little D just kicking it on the couch watching scary movies. <laughs> uh, too much so I'll get stoned at night and then I can't sleep at night because I'm in at home alone <laughs> with the cat and I, I lay awake legit scared from they ghouls still get and goblins. To you, huh? Yeah, and I love it. Okay. What was uh what did it to you this week? <clears throat> I watched uh I watched a movie called The Invitation from uh the oh. mi the mid twenty teens. Okay. It was about cults, and then I watched uh one called uh Host. Which is uh, as it was pitched to me. It's a, it's all shot on Zoom, not like how we're recording this, but they're like, and it's yeah. set in the pandemic. But the whoever was writing about it said, "Trust me, get over that part quick. It's a great movie," and it was okay. <clears throat> all right, sick. Yeah, Good. worth the worth the hour and a half, huh? Yeah, well, because I think you're sitting here on a Zoom meeting, <clears throat> and everybody's quarantined, so you know they're all alone. But then you see like a door open behind somebody or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it was oh, good. Man. Like imagine, yeah, okay. imagine you're watching your own Zoom meeting and you know you're home alone. Your door opens behind you while you're oh, looking there. Don't do this to me right now. What? Right? What? Already... Don't scare you on the episode where we're supposed to be getting scared? <laughs> well, I'm still <laughs> working over the mask debacle. Yeah, so I don't, you know. <laughs> I'm scared oh, for your head lice and pink eye that you're gonna get from. I'm not gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful head of hair. If I was lice, I couldn't get enough. I appreciate be, that. Be swimming kinda. in those luscious locks. Your boy got nothing oh. to worry about here. No, oh. maybe beard lice. Is that be a thing? Yeah, I probably. I mean, if it is, one of us has it. Yeah, I almost worked in a line about nothing is scarier than our low retention rate of ad sponsors on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, maybe we'll get to keep some of them after that. Uh, uh, show them. But no, I, I'll, I'll say I, I, I truly enjoy I, I don't want to be scared for real. I don't want to think somebody's breaking into my house, but manufactured fear, <clears throat> excuse, like around the ho like around the holidays, going like to a controlled houses, environment, 
ha- yeah. haunted houses, scary movies. Me and my sister, when we were little kids, my dad's thing was like Halloween. He liked Halloween. Oh, and really? He would take us to. It was called uh, Hades Haunted House at the at the Odium in Villa Park. And it was like a indoor sports complex that they would. It was one of the first like big haunted houses. Nice, like multi level, crazy. Just pulling stuff. up to just pulling up to the big ones and the ones with some height to them. You're like, oh, this is gonna be a good time. I think you're like that's a yeah. There was one. It's like, a real you, look at it. It's beautiful kind of feeling. I <clears throat> knowing that it's constructed. And that was oh, that was another good scary movie too called Haunted House LLC, which they shot it in kind of a uh like a Blair Witch found footage kind oh. of method where I'm like, ah, we'll see how long I make it through this one. But it was done well. And it was just the layers of like these kids pulling out on haunted houses like that. So they go to this abandoned hotel that's already haunted for real to okay. do a haunted house. And then their haunted house is being haunted because it's inside a haunted house. I liked all the layers. I was a big fan okay. of that. <laughs> yeah, I could see how you, that would get there for you. But, yeah, we would go to this one as little kids, and you, I remember you had to go through a tunnel where you're over plexiglass, and there's, like, rats underneath it in a maze underneath the plexiglass oh! you're crawling on. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it was. That might be, that might be the line <laughs> Oh, for me. it was badass, man. It was so good, and then just... The, like the the maze and me and my sister would just hide in the maze and scare people ourselves because it was so much fun. We found like this corner where nobody could see, <laughs> and just the simplest like and when everybody's hey, already these kids hyped, got a future. Yeah, we're just like <laughs> boo, and people were like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. I still can't get over how much fun I have at haunted houses. I haven't gone. I, I wish I could say I go to them more frequently. I don't. I think the last one I went to was uh, Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. That's like a good one, right? Excellent. It was excellent. Yeah. Paid paid for the fast pass to get to all on all the things every time. <laughs> some some gal. There's like a. It's because it's Universal Studios theme park, and so there's this tunnel you have to go under, for like a pe- pedway tunnel, and there's you know your typical kind of. Zob, z- zombie leather face type guy with a chainsaw <clears throat> and he's chasing yeah. some girl and she's screaming and she just crumples on the ground <laughs> and the guy's a car- and he's over and he's scaring her and eventually she's just like <clears throat> and he's kind of over like uh, all right lady you can get up now <laughs> i can't do anything to you <laughs> And everybody's around just losing their mind laughing at this woman who's paralyzed with fear. <laughs> I'll let you know what kind of person you are in the deep, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh yeah. I I absolutely love it. What about what about your Good. Shane? I um didn't have a great experience with them at first, but definitely as I've gotten older I see the fun in it and I like it a lot more now. I've yeah. always loved haunted houses. And like I said, uh before we started recording, the world's largest haunted house is in my hometown. Yeah. And, yeah, it's called The Cutting Edge, and it is uh, um, it is in a place of Fort Worth, a neighborhood that used to be called Hell's Half Acre. <laughs> yeah, and it's in an abandoned <clears throat> meat processing plant. Oh, and it is right also there. just a stone's throw from the homeless shelter I moved my father into, which is the real haunted house, if yeah. you ask me. This, yeah, uh, this story so, uh, got scary for a different reason. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, I probably have pink eye. Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like that hell only yeah. got a half acre. Oh, because it was like this string of bars in Fort Worth that was like yeah. when it first became a city that was like filled with like there was a bar called the bucket of blood and all this other stuff it was like it just like a real rough bar to town you mean like from the 1800s or yeah 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 like way back it used to oh, be called that. Like, yeah, okay. the late 70s were pretty rough around fort worth yeah. <laughs> yeah no it was like a real like i think that was mostly because of a re- religious connotation there was like a lot of sinning uh, but okay, uh okay. yeah um you ever been to a christian haunted house canane of course not <laughs> I've been I to went, church. They try yeah, to they try to scare you every Sunday with their bullshit. Uh, I went to one, and uh, for like 
it was the I mean it was like what you think it was it was like and in this room an abortion <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically just sins yeah uh, yeah and there and uh, we walked out of there just kind of doing this kind of thing and like I think I was with my buddy also McGuire. a sin yeah. <laughs> I remember, I think it was with my buddy McGuire, and he was just like, laugh. he was like the person who would laugh really loud at anything and didn't really care about keeping yeah. airs up. And that was a, that was the way to go to a Christian haunted house. Yeah. Like, maybe I've never laughed, laughed harder in my life. We took our free pizza and left. I, I, I did, I remember going to one <clears throat> that was at a church, but it was, a fun there, one. there was, yeah, Halloween was not. If you went to a church okay. route, they, they weren't doing Christian. It was Catholic. It was still like, oh, yeah, Halloween, go crazy. Yeah, yeah, no. This was a like a Southern Baptist kind oh, of Oh, no, this was church, like still yeah. an older church, like in the Chicago suburbs with like a good basement. And they, so okay, they, they yeah, still, more, way more, way more fun. My way sis, more fun. Yeah, my sister <clears throat> goes on like all the like get kidnapped kind of stuff. Like she's on another level with getting scared. Like she signs that waivers shit. online. Just, that shit is insane. <clears throat> yeah, and she's like a she's not like some weird goth obsessed with no, no, death yeah, kind like, of person. You, you met like a, like, She's a totally like normal person, but like she'll just sign a waiver. Like, yeah, I got to wait on this corner for a van to come pick me up, and then they give me a <laughs> pseudo torture experience. Like, I always I'm like, what happened to us in our childhood that made us this way? Like, why do I need the attention of strangers, and you need to be fake kidnapped? Man, that must have been one weird night that happened. I, well, we both blocked it out, so thank thank God for repressed memories. Yeah. There. <laughs> do you uh uh do you get your thrills like what about roller coasters that kind of stuff? Yeah, roller coasters are less fun now just because physically it's like a little like, bangs you up a bit. I mean, I haven't been on them in a while, but yeah, I, I mostly just I like I'll have like a headache or just not feel good. Yeah, but I always yeah. I, I, fuck- I still liked roller coasters and. Yeah, I fucking hated them. Oh, and really? I still kind of, the first time I ever got on one, because I was horrified of them, I was, it was at Six Flags in Arlington, Texas, and it was called the Judge Roy Scream, which I think at one point was the world's <laughs> largest wooden roller coaster or some shit like that. And I am not joking. It was named after this guy, Judge Roy Bean, who was like a I was, crazy Texas. I'm wondering what Texas. what's it named after? Because cra- Judge Roy Bean was like a crazy Texas hillbilly who there was some law that said you couldn't carry a gun, I think, in Fort Worth in town. And he, he somebody argued that they were like, well, if you're walking through town, you're not really in town. And that was like his legal just. Yeah. So he's like a psycho. <laughs> that's but, the, uh, that's the reasoning I want a roller coaster built around. <laughs> but I am not joking when I say this. We got to the top of the first hill of the roller coaster. I was sitting next to my dad. And it broke the fuck down for 30 <laughs> minutes. We were just sitting there, and this one guy kept going, We're gonna die! <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> As a joke, I mean, it was like a, you know, like a 17 year old kid. I think it was like nine. Yeah. He was just like, We're gonna die! <laughs> and I. Uh, I I don't like them, and I haven't really been on any since. No, I uh, could see so. that at nine years old, that being your first impression of roller coasters, setting the tone for yeah. and already being scared. <laughs> yeah, I could see that not being how you how you want that to go. Yeah, see, for me, like yeah. haunted houses as a kid, I think I got that for some reason with my feel like the tone was set early for scary movies and scary things for bi- for being fun. For being, like, uh, yeah, I remember I was probably, you know, a nine or ten or something. I remember I was going to watch TV. I was sitting in the kitchen. We had a little TV in the kitchen, and The Shining had just started. Ooh. And it was nighttime, and my mom always let us stay up late, and we had cable, and we could watch almost anything we wanted to watch. There was no parental guidance or anything like that. And The Shining started. I remember my mom just being like, The Shining. Oh. <laughs> That's a scary one. And then she just said, good night. <laughs> and she turned the lights off and went to bed. <laughs> and I watched The Shining alone. <laughs> and it was... Uh, In the kitchen? Ooh, yeah. Just... The co- your cold little feet on the tile floor and everything? Probably didn't re- well, because then the other option was then like we had cable in the basement. 
and I would watch scare. I remember we had it was a it was like a finished basement from like the '60s with like a, like a big bar and everything. But then they didn't okay. use it, so it just had stuff on it. You know, it was like yeah, you, you could hang out down there, but it wasn't a functioning bar anymore. But so there's like a place to hide behind the bar, and it's a dark basement with dark rooms. And I would put a chair in the middle of the floor, just clockwork orange style. And sit in, the, in a one chair in the middle of the floor and watch scary movies to the point Jesus. where I get so terrified that I couldn't even like. You ever get to that point where like you're so scared to move, but you're trying the hardest to explore your peripheral vision without even moving? You're just like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I know what you're. T- uh, uh, yeah, uh, what's what's yeah. over? And I I got. It's just like you're waiting for a bear to not see you. Hopefully, yeah, you're just, just laying the, still. Yeah, yeah, frozen, frozen. Uh, prey animal in the yard yeah and i would get it to where i'd get so scared i could figure out how to like jump off the chair slap the tv off and get up the stairs probably in less than a (laughs) second (laughs) but then i'd get upstairs and i'd feel so like they didn't get me there's nothing there but i'm like ah they didn't get me i loved um i think the something that scared the shit because it just came out at the right time was when uh uh child's play came out okay that like, fuck it, man. That one threw me for a fucking loop. Just the doll yeah. thing. I'm still not great around them. It's fun. Poltergeist, like, yeah. Poltergeist clown got me. Chucky, Chucky, not Chucky was like funny. I understand. It's like cheesy, yeah. But I was just like a little. It was right. I think I was like nine. Yeah. So I was just right there, and it, uh, you know, and I had like wrestling buddies and stuff in my room. So that was probably another part of it that really didn't. Uh, sit well but fucking i remember it's scary that you had wrestling buddies in your room let's talk about what happened to you that made you scared of chucky (laughs) we'll get there i'm in therapy uh i i remember the like truly one of the a movie that's made me the most scared was uh one flew over the cuckoo's nest okay when because she is like Maybe my all-time favorite villain, Nurse Ratchet, like, in sense of, like, just when Jack Nicholson grabs her and starts choking her, I was, like, 15 years old the first time I saw that movie, and I was like, kill that bitch. She was so, what she does to that kid, I fucking, it free, and then when they, like, you know, if you haven't seen One Flew Over the Cougars, I don't care, I'm just gonna blow it for you, but, like, when they lobotomize him, that shit freaked me out, man. Because this woman also looked like my mother a bit. I was going to bring up, I'm like, your mom's a nurse. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. I went over some things here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it like <laughs> it truly freaked me. The Oh, God. That's the kind of that's the kind of scare I like. It's just like <clears throat> high tension. Oh, okay. And gore. Yeah, like that's the the gore stuff is fun, but it's not like a. Cool. And the supernatural stuff is like, <clears throat> yeah, it's fun. But like, um, like I'm more like the first Halloween is what I it's kind of what I gravitate towards more. I might. You know what? This is my confession for love and scary movies and all this stuff. I've never seen Halloween. Oh, buddy. I think me and the cat tonight. I'm going to get high. As it'll shit. get. I'm going to watch some Halloween. tonight. It, it'll get you there. And also watch the movies that made us on Halloween. Oh, OK. You know, like it's Yeah, it's really what the. Yeah, because that fucking face. Oh, my God. It was. Well, I do want. Yeah, I started with Friday the 13th, I think, was the one I okay. started with. And I kind of thought it was silly early on. There's a bar in Brooklyn called Crystal Lake that you, we can go to next time you're town. There's a Crystal Lake everywhere. Oh, okay. I, was the, I thought there was a. I thought, I thought it was set in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Home of the Smoking Popes. Yeah, all right. But, yeah, there's a lot of places Another. that have Crystal Lake. But it's like, oh, what well, area? Well, there's just a bar in Brooklyn called Crystal Lake is what I'm talking about. Oh, like oh. specifically about Friday the 13th. Yeah, there's some horror stuff in there. Oh, yeah. I thought you were like, oh, here's like one block. Oh, this neighborhood is a neighborhood inside of a no, neighborhood. No, 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 no. I, w- I wouldn't want to go do that. Oh, okay. But I'll go to a oh, bar with you. About yeah. Friday the 13th. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I still 45 love getting getting frightened. I don't want to feel threat. I don't want my life to feel threatened. Like again, manufactured fear. Yeah. As as we are going to find out, there's a psychology of why you're attracted to it. It's it's weird because Rachel's not into it at all, and it's it sucks to be like, oh, it's Halloween. I can't wait. And she likes <laughs> Halloween just because she likes silly costumes and partying. But yeah, like, will not do a haunted house. This is 
I really she, she came to uh, Chicago one year for Riot Fest, which was when it was closer to Halloween. And Riot Fest would have. Did they have like a haunted house when we were there? Like a haunted house? Component? I think it was too early. I mean, it would have been they, fun. They do but. it earlier in September. This was closer. It was more in the fall. And it, even in the daytime, I felt very bad for her. But this was hilarious because she had just flown in. She's tired. But I'm like, <clears throat> all right, come to this festival. I met her at the gates because I was already in town. We get her in there and there's this part. Like, here's the little haunted part to get into the festival for Riot Fest. And they got like ghouls and stuff walking around. And they were like, yeah. It's the daytime, but they're just doing the leering thing. You know, they're not jumping out at yeah, you, yeah, but they're yeah. just being intimidating. <clears throat> and we're walking, and one of them's right. Rachel stops. She gets a beer. She's this ghoul is right behind Rachel. It's the daylight. I'm like, oh, she probably sees him or something. She doesn't. We've uh, and this guy. He's just right next to her. All he does, he just goes, boo, just that. <laughs> Fucking fifteen dollar festival beer just <laughs> she just maced herself with the whole beer. <laughs> just from boo. Splish. It was fall. It was chilly out. Yeah. She'd just gotten to town, doused herself with like a twenty ounce beer. <laughs> and I laughed immediately because it was the funniest thing. I'm I'd sure ever that seen. I'm sure that really set the tone and for I, the day. But again, like I can't how are you? No, it's fine. How am I supposed I get, to respond? Yeah. Like in the moment, it was just to watch. Have you ever seen somebody throw a beer in their own face? It makes no sense. It's I hilarious. Mean, I, ima- I imagine it looks to, uh, pretty similar to somebody trying to squeeze their face into a Halloween mask that's too tight. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I I have I don't know if I've ever seen it, but I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll play some footage back for you. It was delightful. Yeah, we do have a YouTube channel now. So. <laughs> I think my eyes are finally clearing up. Twenty nine minutes later, that was right. a waste of waste it was, of twenty it was, bucks. It was twenty bucks. Well, yeah, it was a waste of twenty bucks. We'll take it on the budget, Shane. Don't worry, we'll reimburse you. Let's uh, go. Yeah. I, I'm we'll, going to we'll, say we'll bill it to the props department. Bill it to props. You <laughs> thought it was bad. I thought it was good. Let's go. To I the, mean, go, not, let's go to the good and the bad up next. You see, look at that? that shift. Yeah, ah, we'll yeah. be right back with this ad from our sponsor, uh, Jason's Hockey Mask Emporium. Get a mask today, or I'll fucking murder your face and your whole family. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> All things comedy. <laughs> What's up? It's your boy Kyle here. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, but I kind of I, I drink coffee to get going in the morning. I just drink whatever's around, and we've all had that sip of like, ugh, why am I drinking this just to be awake? Uh, so I decided it's time to uh, start enjoying the coffee. You don't have to just have it. You can also enjoy it. Uh, and that's why we have uh, Trade Coffee as our sponsor. Trade Coffee, if you go to their website, they will help you pick out the perfect kind of coffee that would fit your taste. Or if you want to try something new, that's what I did. I got City Blend right here. It's a light roast. I never mess around with light roast. But I went on the website, did the quiz. I'm like, I'm going to give light roast a chance. And it's like fruity, citrusy. I got another bag I'm waiting to get into here. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, you could have good coffee in the morning. It kind of makes the day even that much uh you can uh, tolerate it more. So if you want to support small businesses and brew the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's time to try Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our listeners a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash NAFT. That's drinktrade.com slash NAFT for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. All right. Thanks to that ad from our sponsor. We love doing those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind them. I like them. It's fun. Uh, thanks for being. Thanks to Charlene for the research that goes behind all our podcasts. It's there. Whether we convey that there's been research done, that's on us. That's our <laughs> fault. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes electricity can't be conducted or something. Uh, <laughs> I try. Why do people like to be scared, Shane? Why do I like it? Why does Rachel not like it? <clears throat> There's got to be a reason, right? Yeah. Do you well, have an answer for thank that God question? The Huffington Post. Uh, 
re- reliable uh, liberal website, the Huffington Post. Go get him. <laughs> oh, it's Scranton Joe. Scranton Joe. <laughs> uh, yeah, people who love scary movies experience stress differently. Uh, more sensation seeking may gravitate towards scary movies because they how they interpret the body's reaction to stress, according to Margie Kerr, a sociologist who studies fear. Uh, yeah, I think that like they they point out that highly sensitive people can easily be overstimulated by their environment. Rachel uh, thinks she's a highly sensitive person. Uh, yeah, I mean, she- and she hates being scared. <laughs> she she forgets that I'm in the house. Every day, which I've had to learn to not take personally, where she turns a corner and she's like, Ugh! and I'm like, I live here. I'm not jumping so, out from on. a closet. Yeah. I'm yeah. just in the she, next she, room and you're always surprised I'm in the next room. And you guys have been together for what, like 1900 years? Eight or something years. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Living yeah, together for not, five. That's, and she's always yeah, that's, surprised that that's I gotta, might be in the house at the same time as her. So I can see why scary movies aren't her bag, man. What if it's just what if it's just you turn the corner? She goes, ah, what have I done with my life? That's how <laughs> That's I've it, been taking it. And it hurts my feelings yeah. like she's disappointed. Yeah. So I'm still here. I get it. I think um, I the I liken being scared in a good way to the feeling of like, you know, when you almost hit something with your car and then you. And then you don't. Oh yeah, relief, almost like extreme. Yeah, relief. yeah, yeah. I enjoy that quite a bit. Like that's how I can kind of take it yeah. into like. But um, Kerr also says from the same article, it can be a really wonderful social bonding experience. We do know that the bonds we make under mm-hmm. stress often are more intense, especially with people we already have a positive association with. So if you're going with your friends and you do something fun and intense and scary you end up forming a more layered and rich memory, yeah. which I, I, I actually like that point a lot. Cause like a haunted house alone is just kind of lame. That's the saddest. You know, that's the saddest thing I can think of. Like I go to haunted houses alone just so I could feel something. <laughs> at least, at least somebody wants my attention. October there. is my December. <laughs> at least somebody cares that I'm around. <laughs> Still a sweet irony that they're trying to scare me so much I leave, but uh, yeah, I get <laughs> Went it. to the haunted house. The ghouls ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> that was too ugly I, to scare. <laughs> Man, you too ugly to scare. Get out of here. <laughs> but you me, scared us, you. dog. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we do. Um, I do think uh, it is a... Scary movie, it's a social thing, yeah. like, for me, for sure. Like, I won't do it alone. I love doing it on a date. I love doing it with, like, a bunch of buddies just sitting around drinking beer. Yeah. Horror movies, any of that kind of stuff. We What did we go? We went and saw a couple when we were uh, we saw on the, the road. To- we saw, we were in rural Pennsylvania, and we saw The Witch. Woof. And then had to drive yeah. through like rural Pennsylvania. We were goofing dark. off. We got a little. We got a little. We got a little goofy with it. It was a fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a good scary one. Yeah, we were on the road in rural Pennsylvania, yeah, letting like, you know that the letting you know that the tickets are flying off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> Where we were, we were like in New England, we were like in Northampton, Massachusetts, or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, not quite rural, I, but like. New England. We were somewhere in New wooded, England. Like, enough wooded area. Enough New Englandy scary that we were like. And that movie is about, like, basically pilgrims and yeah, shit. Yeah, we and walked out of the yeah. movie theater into the set of The Witch. Yeah, and it was, it was a, but that was a good in, one. In autumn. In, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. and So that was, like, that was fun to do that with you. If I had done that, I would go see yeah. a, maybe go see a scary movie alone in a theater. But I had more fun with you driving back and kind of freaking out. And then... I think the next night we went back to the same theater and we saw The Green Room, which is also kind of like a horror thriller. Oh, we I think we did do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's where, and like, that was the- oh, sorry. I, Rachel will say, like, she's like, I'll I'll handle, like, monsters or something. I, I don't want, like, real people being the scare. That's the kind I like. I do, too. But, like, I understand, like, her, like, I understand the mentality of, like, oh, a, a monster... 
Because I, I realize we're just talking about scary stuff, but we're like we're trying to defend it. But like we're both like, yeah, getting scared's awesome. So I'm trying to like, yeah, oh yeah, people that hate being I, scared. Yeah, we have to think of a little bit different. Yeah, perspective. I forgot about. Yeah. I'm just like it's like almost Halloween, and I just want to talk about scary stuff. But like yeah. Rachel hates it. But I'm like, I'm, <laughs> but understanding why somebody might not like it in a way that like like Rachel said, if it's based in real life, I don't want to know like. Oh, this is a true story about a guy who just broke into somebody's house and murdered people. Like that. Well, there are those yeah. people. I don't want to think about that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get why you wouldn't like that. But for me, it's still kind of uh... as a giant crow just flew up into the tree in front of my window right now. I'm just getting like, <laughs> ah, it's daylight out here, man. Yeah. Even with well, the cat, not... even having the cat on the couch watching scary movies is at least something like some other living thing to be able to talk to when I'm getting scared is such a yeah. relief. So if your old little dirt nap like just goes in the middle of a movie and just kind of does a weird look to the side, man. When animals <laughs> animals can like, they always say like animals can sense ghosts. That's why they'll just stare at nothing. It's like no, they just have hypersensitive hearing and they can hear like water going through pipes in the walls that you can't detect. But that's yeah, yeah, why yeah, they yeah. will. But it still is pretty wild when like a cat or a dog will just decide to like. Man, I'm really hyper focused on something you can't see right now. And I, <laughs> man, I don't need that yeah. shit when I'm home alone. Come on, <laughs> if they're if they're just up in tense attack mode and their shoulders are all hooked up, yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, it can it can do it, it will do it to you for sure. I like that. I like her. I I do like. I just want to reiterate again. I do like her point about doing it with a group of people. Yeah, a haunted house. I still have a memory of going to the cutting edge in Fort Worth, the, the haunted house. With a bunch of people from high, like probably eight of us, and everybody had a date, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world to be in the front of the pack, and then just like round a corner and just oh. be like, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> and have nothing be there, and have everyone freak the fuck out. <laughs> we, I, I'm going personal experience again. I know it's supposed to be good and bad, but like, there was an abandoned seminary right next to the community college we all went to. <laughs> and it's, that'd be a fun setting for a horror movie, a it, community college. But well, next to an abandoned seminary, like the setup was perfect. And mm. so one day, like there's just three of us, <clears throat> me and my buddy, Bob, my buddy, Brian, we're leaving the abandoned. We're, we're leaving like community college. Like we got to go check out this seminary. And it's, it was, it's big. It was like the size of like a, like a high school or something. It's a, you know, it's, it's where they teach priests. And it's abandoned. Woof. And we get in there. No, we had somebody had like a keychain light, but there's three of us, and it was the most Scooby Doo shit. Because whoever was front hated being in the front. Because like, oh, God, <laughs> why do I gotta be in the front? I don't know what's coming. And whoever was in the back was like, well, I don't know what something's behind me. I hate this shit. So we had to keep trading off <laughs> for who had to be Dutch door in the middle. <laughs> oh, we were God. like a human centipede of fear that we just crawling through this thing. <laughs> And then just we, like f- f- five stone community college students who are it, should be majoring in ref- refrigerator repair. It was three stone shit. community college students, and then Sorry. The, the sun went down while we were inside, and all we had was a keychain light to find our way out, and it was awesome. And then we we brought a bunch of people back like a week later with flashlights Aww. and shit. And then I, w- I was like climbed up in some bell tower and I'm looking down the thing and I see my buddy Bob at the bottom. He's looking. He's like, the door's moving. Oh, and he just goes, yeah. oh, it's just the cops. Oh, fuck. It's the cops. <laughs> 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 and we all got oh, yeah. trespassing tickets. Uh, and then we're leaving. The cops were like, do you guys make it to the boiler room? That's the scariest part. We're like, no. Can you show it to us since you're already busting us? He's like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> Come on, man. This people are, people have died here. Yeah, man, I'm already paying <laughs> for this. I uh you met my buddy Kiefer in Austin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huge horror guy. Huge like Yeah. Like that that's that just his world. And he would take us around Fort Worth to supposedly haunted houses like people lived in. Oh. And like Yeah. And like residents would be like we would go to him in the middle of the night and residents would be like We'd see them flip on their lights, and that'd be the most scared we'd be because we were trespassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, man, there were a few. Of, he, his parents did Halloween great, man. They were so good at it. Yeah. It was great. But I remember, uh, I think it was him and my buddy Mike, and Mike was the first person I ever saw yell back at their parents, so you know he was like a real shitty kid. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but they were like, we built a haunted house in Mike's garage. And I was like, okay. And, uh, and they're like, it's scary. And Kiefer was standing outside the garage and Nabe was the other guy, my buddy Nabe. And I walked in there like, Shane, you first. Mm-hmm. And I walk into the garage and there's like a snake, a, a rubber snake hanging down, you know? And I was like, this is fucking lame. Yeah. And then Mike was just in the, the front seat of the car with the seat down and just hit the horn really loud. And, I just, <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> it did scare the shit out of me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then like I walked out, and I was like, and Kiefer goes, yeah, I don't think I need to do it. I think I got what the big jump is. <laughs> Cause he, he just heard it outside the garage. <laughs> Well, uh, back, the article of uh, why you like scary things says childhood experiences affect how someone feels about being scared. That makes sense. It's kind of like sometimes these psychology, yeah. these studies are like, well, no shit. But people have had positive experiences when they, were, when they were young with what researchers call fun scary, an experience that startles but doesn't contribute to real fear, already have an internal concept that frames certain scary activities in an exciting way. I mean, I think that's what we... You had a real fear, like a roller coaster breaking down. That's a real fear that was already yeah. added to, yeah, like yeah. fun fear of yeah, a yeah. roller coaster. But then it breaking, yeah, you're well within your rights to be like, "Fuck roller coasters, I'm not doing that." That's like, oh, I like going that's to haunted enough, houses, but that's then enough one of them, cause for trepidation, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. like that. Oh, but then the guy in the in the Jason mask uh, actually stabbed my friend because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Uh, my friend worked in a haunted house, my friend Beth, at the cutting edge. Yeah. And she jumped out and she like you know, she's wearing a ghoul mask or whatever, and some guy just punched her right in the face. Of course. And that I mean, shit Yeah, and that shit happens a lot, and she sued him, like and it was like and she made money or whatever. Really? But like or she got taken she got taken care of. Yeah, because it's like you can't assault him. You know, like you know what you're there for. Like, like I don't I also don't think in a haunted house you can I f- I wonder if it's weirder today with how many how many people like train for MMA. Like it's yeah. probably scarier working at a haunted house that people have so many default modes, like striking <laughs> default modes as opposed to yeah. just scream and have fun. Yeah, you just end up in some kind of Russian triangle lock because you jumped out. Yeah, with I think a my dad pushed that. My dad in the middle of his like martial arts training when we went, I think he accidentally pushed a guy and then was like, "I'm so sorry," like <laughs> trying to pick him up. <laughs> But I like I uh, I don't know if you could sue them. I don't. That's a no. weird. That's a gray area of like. I think they like they were like you. I think because I think in the waiver or something you sign at the at. The- yeah, true. You can't. Maze in it, and that was like the worst because it was just like maze. It was just a maze that was like kind of like scary and spray painted or whatever. But there would be like people banging shit and just kind of like 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 just yeah. like it was fun i mean they did a good like it was like fun but i remember like you'd be like there's something about actually getting lost in a maze and then have something walk around the corner and yeah. that, like and have you have your back against the wall and just be like ta, ta, ta. like oh yeah. man Ugh. that was that like at the height of Tegan going to all her haunted houses, like it turned it, it was like how you found out about new bands before the internet. Like yeah. this, like in the 90s. Because she would go to a haunted house and afterwards there'd just be kids with flyers, like, come to our haunted house. And they would just drive out to like the woods. <laughs> it would just be like <laughs> teenagers with like nails sticking out of two by fours being like, are you scared? And they're like, yeah, but different in a different way. Here's your ten dollars. <laughs> Here's your ten dollars, hillbilly. Let me let me leave. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you gotta watch it with some of these. These are well, not sanctioned. There's not like OSHA's not walking through this one. OSHA's not walking through this abandoned Toys R Us that some potheads broke y- yeah, into. Yeah, there's no yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, this is just a yeah. <laughs> this is just basically a horrible place. Yeah, this is just a bunch of rakes yeah. hidden under the leaves yeah. that you're gonna see. Somebody's putting their own family pictures up. <laughs> Yeah, but there is that movie cool. American Scream, and it's about people that put on haunted houses in their own house, and how like how much effort they put into it. And it was oh, really, it was that like it, fun. it was really heartwarming, like about how much effort yeah. people put in. And I will defend Los Angeles in a way of like you got all these people that that's their job is props and and set design. That is so, that's a good point. <clears throat> there's whole yeah. neighborhoods that will design for Halloween will just like go all out. And I, I, 
I love it. I never, I never plan a costume. Well, now we're just talking about Halloween. We got to stay on topic. We're talking but about. But no, but getting, like, I like we could stay a little, a little off of mm-hmm. it. I uh, that is a uh, this is a little off topic, but like going to the good neighborhood to get the full size candy bars. Oh, I know it's like the hackiest premise of comedy, but like, it is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, my the rich neighborhood or one of the wealthier neighborhoods in Fort Worth, where I'm from. My God, dude. This would you would not expect this neighborhood to be the kind of people that like go nuts for Halloween. Yeah. But there is this like Texas of uh, kind of thing of like we will not be outdone by anyone. So Oh, I've never heard of that well, before with Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and they go a all these rich people go fucking ape shit. Yeah. And then it, it it's it's really fun. And then and then like inevitably all these like kids from poor na- poor neighborhoods come in and flood it. Yeah, and it is awesome because there's also like mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it serious vandalism, but somebody might lose a couple of jack o' lanterns, you know? Oh, that was my buddy, who's a notorious son of a bitch. Growing up, I remember it was just yeah, like just trick or treating, like teenage trick or treating, and then like going to a house where the it was like like maybe ten o'clock, but woman's like i don't but it's late and, and you're too old and close the door on him he just goes wrong answer bitch and just took her jack-o'-lanterns and threw him in the street <laughs> like, all right man i don't know if this is the best impression yeah. you want to make <laughs> yeah i uh I, yeah that kind of like it does lead to some fun teenage vandalism uh i uh i wanted to read this uh this article that charlene found called cardiologist says getting a good scare could come with health benefits Short scare bursts can have positive impacts like strengthening the immune system. When your body gets that surge of stress, you release antioxidants and those fight cellular damage. So it can be incredibly healthy in that way, says cardiologist Dr. Nadi Kumar. When we're scared, we also release the hormone oxytocin, which which can help us feel closer to those around us, which sounds like the horny hormone. You know? It does. I yeah, I always had like I tried to have some joke about like like if you're uninsured or have like like the Christian Scientist method of like health care for your kids. Like ah, just get a just give them a shot of Texas Pete's and yell boo in their face real quick. <laughs> so that'll 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 scare a cold right out of them. <laughs> you don't need. He no, does say you don't need no medicine. <laughs> he does actually say Kumar does caution against scaring anyone with heart conditions. Yeah. Yeah, so don't don't go up to your old papa and freak him out for the hell of it. No, I, uh, I we used to do that. A little, ki- I guess the little kids guy. Like I remember my dad. Like we were one of the first houses. People didn't really decorate for Halloween, like in the seventies and yeah. I think the eighties. It kind of started. Yeah, it's uh, really is that. I don't. It, I don't think it was as prevalent because I remember as a kid we were one of the only ho- houses. That, like my dad had hand painted headstones that he cut out of wood and would put dry Sick. ice in the bushes so there was yeah. fog. Yeah, and it was more like cause my dad's not really that guy. So for him, like, oh, it's Halloween. I'm putting on the goblin mask. We're gonna act like yeah, we're, yeah. we're act like like we would but sit like your dad got into that shit. That's at, cool. Yeah, and we we're like you know sit in the bushes and like kids come to get candy, like scare them. But like, all right, man, that's just a four year old. I don't think we need to be doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I don't know if that's like fun. I don't know if I created not fun scary memories for children <laughs> by doing that to them. I uh I remember Keeper's parents would throw Halloween parties, and one year they got all this dry ice. Mm-hmm. And we were putting it in our cups for our drinks, which I guess is, and then our our lips would start bleeding and our fingers yeah. would start bleeding. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, we can't have you kids doing this anymore. And so, like, my costume was half fake blood and half real blood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I probably, considering between that and this, uh, this uh, Freddy Krueger mask debacle from earlier in the pod, maybe <laughs> I... I should stick to like just wearing a football jersey on Halloween. <laughs> yeah, you're just like the, the brawny uh, paper towel man. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I can understand why people don't like being scared as if they're already, uh, you know, you're raised with like actual fear or actual bad things in your life that, which is a trope in horror movies. Yeah. I don't like going to horror movies. I had a bad childhood. Like, Oh, so, somebody did fa- my whole family got murdered. I don't want to go see a 
scary yeah, movie, a about, movie about, about a slasher. Movie. Yeah, a slasher movie or something. So it's already even put into the 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 world that we're talking about of why somebody might not like being scared for fun. But I uh, I wish Rachel was into it. I, I wish she would like get down with a fun scare. She she'll break a you know, cu- so couple weird, things here and there, but. She's such an adventurous person, too, in a lot of ways. So it seems like it would be right up her alley. But that's each her own, I guess. But I, again, like, I don't think she grew up going to scary movies or trying to get scared for fun. From what I know yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. That was never introduced to her as a child as like, no, this is a fun thing. And there's not real harm. Yeah. And I, I think, think maybe yeah, two I, older brothers like, oh, yeah, this isn't like a scare we're enjoying it's just two older brothers being two older brothers your whole life yeah like, yeah they're just like giving her pink belly and stuff and be like <laughs> yeah. happy halloween fuck you yeah 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 but yeah you could you can mix up the message but the okay here five re- psychology today five reasons we enjoy being scared let's get it let's get five why we enjoy it by other people might not the safety net consistent uh we go into fight, flight, or freeze mode when we get scared. But even though we we are cognitively lazy, speak for yourself. Our <laughs> brains are good at what they do. So if we are in a setting where we get a safe fright, a horror movie, haunted house, scary video games. Scary video games, dude. That's a whole new thing for me. Oh, dude, I played a game called Manhunt years ago where you're like a uh, escaped. Si- <laughs> what? It's just cheap. It's a cheap joke. We can just keep going. Yeah, on. yeah okay. But it was like you were supposed to be this guy who would like go kill other methods and stuff i think yeah and it it was on a wii so you could like use like you'd have to like go around someone and sneak up on them and like use a piano wire to like choke their neck <laughs> and you would have to actually actually do the motion <laughs> and you burn some calories would, yeah and it, I'd, I'd be like and you'd just be like ah like really <laughs> i'm surprised and then you'd be like i killed that fuck <laughs> nintendo usually doesn't let like super violent stuff like that through I'm pretty sure it was on Wii, yeah, because I remember something like that. It was like, oof. We played one. My buddy and I played one. It was a 4D game, like a Dave & Buster's. We just, like, smoked a joint, rolled right into Dave & Buster's because I was there, like, a couple nights before. I'm like, this game looks cool. I need somebody to play it with me. So we rolled in there, and it's you're sitting side by side, and it's like a shoot zombies kind of thing. But it's yeah. 4D because you have goggles on, so it's, like, virtual, and yeah, you're yeah, moving okay, around. Okay. But then it would like you'd get like the hot breath of a zombie on your neck. Woo! And it was one of those like we're watching the I first we're, like that. We're watching people. It's in a booth, so you can't really see the people playing, but you just hear grown men screaming inside of this thing. And then we play it, we're like, how bad can this be? And then we were just grown men screaming inside of a video game booth. It was uh, that intense? It was awesome. Just, what was the ah, game? I can't. I gotta look up the name because this was a few years back. So I'm sure the technology now is even far surpassed what that. Fucking has. please, if anybody knows, but like call mist, like messages. yeah, mist and stuff like that. So it's oh. 4D. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Awesome. It was great. So scary video games. Maybe that's what I'll do tonight. I got the PlayStation fired up. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. There, yeah. There's a game called Phasmophobia that I play on the PC here, and you are just a ghost hunter. And you have to take the different items, and you can play with other people online. And that one, fuck, that one got me so good because it's set. It's not set in like, oh, here's a drippy walled old castle. It's like you're still going yeah. into like a suburban house. That's like okay, the fan like like in Poltergeist, like the house from Poltergeist. Yeah. But then like, oh, here's let's put the strobe on, and the strobe will just be like blink, and there's just a ghoul right in front of you. <laughs> like, oh, no. oh. Oh, I, I, so anyway, sorry. Yeah. Uh, anytime that anytime they introduce like a new element in a movie like that, oh, yeah. I just oh, want to talk about stuff that scares me. I, 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 I can't help. If you don't like being scared, I, God bless you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It's such a like well, it's, it's such a life affirming thing. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. It kind of makes you feel yeah to be freaked out. Kind of makes you feel a little more well. And the, here, why we like to be scared? The safety net. Uh, our bodies, uh, you know, our bodies calm, and many of us uh, subsequently we enjoy the experience because we know it's a safe thing. Our, our brains will tell us that it's a safe thing when it's a video game or a movie. Uh, 
Number two, the flood. When we get scared, we experience a rush of adrenaline, a release of endorphins and dopamine. That's what you're talking about. It gets yeah. you going, you know, just like a roller coaster. Like it. It's a little bit of juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah little, kinda... very much so a little bit of juice. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, self-satisfaction. Okay, some people enjoy pushing the envelope. That's old Tegan there. Seeking thrills and seeing how much fear can be tolerated. I don't know how much of that, like, she signed me up for one of those haunted houses. I don't houses. know what my barometer is for that, but I do think I would like to try it. It's funny. The example the author has here is, I'll never forget being scared of my mind watching The Shining when I was 12 years old. Yes, but also being quite proud of myself for making it through the entirety of the film without turning my head away. That's but, awesome. There's a relief at the end of these things. When you see people yeah. walking out of a haunted house and it's like they're in the best mood. That's true. Yeah, it's true. It's a line of people. Maybe one out of any every ten or fifteen. There's just a. There are some, there's every, a, usually a woman w- openly weeping, but uh, yeah. everybody else seemed to have a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of you can really see like a a bro walking out with his girlfriend who didn't enjoy it, and he's high fiving and chest bumping another guy. I did. Tegan signed me up for one of her crazy haunted houses because it was like they were doing the test run in L.A. and she wasn't living there yet. So she bought me a ticket. She's like, you need to go check this out. And I did go by myself. And that is why that experience was weird because they you had to go through it by yourself. And you're waiting. Oh. They just give you and they tell you where wear clothes. You don't mind getting messed up. And it was in some abandoned building in downtown L.A. Like, wear clothes you don't mind getting messed up. I, you, They just give you a number, and all of a sudden you're, like, you're just waiting in a hallway, and somebody's on a walkie-talkie like, you, 43, go, go, go. And they just make you run up these stairs, and you're running, and it's dark, and then there's somebody like you bump into somebody like, keep going, and you keep going. And then somebody's like, through that door, and you just go, burst through this door into this pitch black room. And then somebody just like bear hug grabbed me. And pushed me into a bathroom and had me like slump like over a toilet where I just saw a bunch of cut zip ties around the base of it. Oh! And at, at that point, I was like, I don't like that I signed a waiver for whatever this is. Like, I don't like what I, I don't want to do this. <sighs> and they're like, that's a little freaky. Yeah, I would like, like to do that. Though. Give me your shoes and socks. Like they take your shoes yeah. and socks right away. So now you're barefoot I- in an abandoned building. <laughs> Oh, and you're like, you're, there's parts where you're wading through like two feet of water. Oh, that sounds awesome and also horrible. It, well, it was scary until it still crumbled into like, oh, these are art school thespians that like, now I'm gonna freak you out by doing gay shit to you. I'm like, bring it on, dude. I am. Yeah. Like, that's that. You're not gonna yeah. get me on that. That. As far as uh, just to go to this point, in the haunted house before we switch over, or like of just being scared. Yeah. You really got to have good actors, like people who know what they're doing in these environments, yeah. you know, like because it can it can really shred the, uh, you know, like the fourth wall in half, like pretty quick or whatever. You know, like This one fell apart because they relied too heavily on like a hokey story at the end instead of. Yeah, maybe a little but jump was, scare and a little. But but good details. It started with good tea. Yeah, but at the end, it's like, oh, this woman, like, you have to pretend to kill a woman to get out of a room. And I'm like, this is corny. Like, oh, now, 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 shoot that lady there. There's a fake gun or something. Like, this is dumb. Like, like, I could tell they were trying to make it a a more immersive thing as opposed to just scares happening to you. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the beginning was, of it, ooh man, the beginning of it, I did regret that I was doing it for a minute. That's a cool they did a good job. Yeah, I will say this: uh, one, I'm going to be on the road the last two weeks of October, pretty much straight through, uh, and I'll be in New Orleans for part of it with Sean Patton. So if there is a good haunted house there. Reach out, let us know, and then I'll like I'll be all through the South. So if you have good haunted houses in the South, I might uh, I might of make a special trip because this sounds, yeah, they're called homes. <laughs> uh, but uh, I would love I would love to love love to go to one or a few of them actually. Uh, but um, yeah. Well, here's the last two reasons why uh, <clears throat> why you enjoy the the scaring uh, closeness with others, as we talked about, brings you closer with people. 
common piece of dating advice for young men years ago was to take their date to a scary movie. Hmm, kind of creepy. Uh, but I get it. We've come a long way. Yeah. Curiosity. Number five, curiosity. Many people are curious about the dark side. The fear of the unknown is one of the most natural, instinctive fears we have. And it also is one of the oldest curiosities. I get that. I, uh, however, another notion I've mentioned countless times in past posts is that people like their worlds to make sense. They like things wrapped up in nice, neat little packages. Our world is easier to engage with when things make sense to us, and so some may choose to engage further with the unknown in order to better make sense of the situation. That I wonder if that's why the true crime thing is like so massive. We, we haven't even talked about that, like the idea of like people obsessed with true crime. And, and I finally read something that like, oh, people that are anxious and have anxiety, that it's they like true crime stories because it may, it rationalizes their anxiety. Oh. Like, oh, I'm not just scared of everything all the time because look, this stuff does happen, you know. Because one not, guy was killed one guy was killed in Sioux Falls with a yeah. plastic fork Tony here. Yeah. yeah, so they're like yeah. paranoia or anxiety. So there's some catharsis to it. Yeah. yeah, like, oh that made a little more sense because I was kinda like I did think it was weird that people are so obsessed with it right now. Yeah, but I, I mean, listen. I listen I mean, to all that I, stuff. It too. doesn't look like it's going. There's no shortage of murder and crime in the world. So no, no. I mean, they, they, they're making a lot of content. These murderers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not art content. Better anyway. than TikTok comedians. Yeah. Well, um, tell us about your haunted houses and all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna throw it to the callers. We're gonna come back to you guys and hear what you think right after this ad from Hell. It's hot, but it ain't so bad. And that was a word from our sponsor, Hell. If you go, tell them Satan sent you. Anyways, I guess actually it was God. Uh, <laughs> Satan would already be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I guess God sent Anyways, that was a fun riff, wasn't it? Anyway. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> uh, I um, I can't. This uh, this is gonna be fun. I'm really excited to hear what uh what everyone has to say today uh, on yeah. the calls. Yeah. Uh yeah. So um, please, uh, Charlene, give us our give us our first caller. Meow. This is Doug in Fort Worth. I don't like being scared. It's 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 not fun. Not to me, at least. My wife fucking loves scary movies. I think she's crazy. I think the world's just scary enough. Probably because my wife was murdered when I was 10. She was 20. Anyway, on a fast food a little bit, uh, Brahms is the fucking best. The only place you can get an actual hand dipped ice cream sundae, a burger, and whatever sundries you may need from a grocery store, like a fucking frozen pizza. It's fucking weird. Or a gallon of milk. Anyway. What? what was all that? I know everything he just said. <laughs> did did he say his wife was murdered? When he was ten and she was twenty? <laughs> I think that's what he said. And where was he shopping? Uh, Brahms. It's a Oh, I thought he just said, I like rum. You can get anything there. <laughs> like, like he's just getting drunk on Captain Morgan's and stealing shit. Oh, I couldn't God, tell that was great. <laughs> that was great. That guy rules. Call back any time. <laughs> I, wor- I worked at a Brahms. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I remember my first job was scooping ice cream at a place called Heidi's. And then my second job was Brahms, and they also served ice cream. And I remember in my interview, the woman goes, it's good. You have ice cream experience. And I was like, this place is fine. <laughs> yeah. One of my I'm first a, jobs. I'm, I'm 16 years old and I weigh 180 pounds. I have a lot of ice cream. <laughs> How come we're losing profits? Hey, don't look at me, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do another one because I don't know how we could dissect what that person said. <laughs> dissect. Mm-hmm. Hey, fellas. 
a uh, big fan of the show. Um, the topic I'll set for uh, this week, I guess, was um, on being scared. Um, it takes a lot to scare me, um, but uh, I found out, I don't know, sometime in my 20s, I was sitting in my car, I was talking on the phone, and this guy, he was jogging at night, um, like ran past my car, and uh, like right, right next to my window. And it scared me so bad that I like threw up, like I vomited, <laughs> <laughs> like totally, like I, I managed to get the door open. But uh, I had never, I never experienced that before. Uh, I don't know if anybody else does that, but yeah. apparently, if I'm like super, super shocked and scared, uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll just throw up. So yeah, enjoy that. Bye. I want to know the perspective of the jogger that goes by and this guy throws up and he's like, what? I'm trying to get into shape. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know I've put on a few, but I'm putting in the work. I'm too ashamed to jog during the day. (laughs) And then I go at night and this guy still threw up at the sight of me. (laughs) (laughs) I love that he's just like, it's hard to scare me. (laughs) Oh man! Uh, Don't drive in California where motorcycles could split lanes. Your your whole car will be a vomitorium, man. Oh. <laughs> meow meow, kitty cat. I hate this. <laughs> oh, what's new, pussy cat? I want to try it all out. Ooh, uh, shout out to the the litter box. Uh, um, I like being scared. <laughs> Um, Shout out to I have a lot of horror movies. Like being scared. Uh, I was raised deeply Mormon, and so it was all rated R movies that were scary. And I was like, "Oh, it must be like really crazy." And then I saw 2013 Evil Dead, okay. and it holds the world record for the most fake blood used on a movie, which is 500,000 gallons, <laughs> and they made it rain blood. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now now I watch scary movies all the time, and I'm not Mormon, so <laughs> maybe they have something to do with each other. Anyway, uh, big fan of the pod. Meow, meow. <laughs> meow, meow, baby. Meow, meow. Oh, he's just going. Sounds like this guy escaped a real haunted house, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's going from one cult to another. He's really he's really quick to adapt the uh, meow, meows. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, good for you, man. I I like they didn't say, like, oh, well, rated R movies were scary, and then this one had all the blood. <laughs> <laughs> there was, oh, man, there is something about the Evil Dead movies that just never gets old to me. Oh, like, tickles me forever. Yeah, over-the-top gore. Is always yeah. kind of, but like it's it's weird to say like, and I gotta rewatch those. I think I saw those maybe a long time ago, but like hostile or like torture porn, I'm like, Meh. it's got to yeah. have a level of camp to it. Yeah, well, it's got, or at least be a little like, not just um, like what do I say? wink I say? at me? You know? Not yeah, or just like at least be clever and not just violent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. let's hear from another member of the litter. <sighs> Hi, this is Rick. Regarding being scared, I love it. I'm a big-time horror fan. I feel that by putting yourself into situations where you can be sca- scared and feel safe, you are kind of expanding your boundaries uh, and pushing them to new limits so that if you encounter a truly frightening situation, uh, some kind of crisis, you will be better equipped to deal with it. It helps you to remain calm when things are uh, dangerous, things give you real trepidation. You're able to maintain a level where you can handle it better than someone that tries to avoid fear altogether. Thanks very much. Love the podcast. Oh, thanks, man. That was insightful, Rick. I I think I would disagree, though. 
I don't know. I well, because yeah, I think like, oh, I'm scared because I'm watching a movie versus I'm scared because there's a guy in front of my house with a gun that wants me to come outside. <laughs> well, yeah, I get, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a bit much. But, but I think um, that's why the scary movies. I get are what he's going. I get yes. what he's saying, and I could see it being uh, adaptive to some people. But I think that those people might already be uh, people who react. In a positive manner, or like you know, in, yeah. a, in a more organized manner. Yeah, yeah, I just look at it the way as like, oh, somebody knows Taekwondo, but then they're not going to be of any help in a street fight, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Sean Jordan. Uh, Listen, I didn't have to go throwing our boy under the bus like that. I'll throw him right to. under the goddamn bus. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I will say, yeah. Uh, shockingly, no women called on this one. Uh, but it's but I. <laughs> That's weird though, because I I still know like a lot of ladies that love the scary moves. Enjoy shit. horror movies, yeah. Tegan, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Um, I got a couple friends who do too. I just think it's funny that uh, <laughs> I love. <laughs> we had some real fun weird ones today on the yeah. calls, but I could also see yeah. like why why ladies like uh, maybe don't like scary movies when they're like always the first victims. <laughs> Yeah, there's such a tradition of that in horror. Not films a lot of ladies like, and, and and black fellas jumping out to be like, yeah, I love getting scared recreationally. Like, <laughs> as if, yeah, as if the other like the other guy, life is already maybe a little scarier yeah. for them. Sorry, in I'm general. going to the grocery store later, and I have to hope that something horrible doesn't yeah. happen. Hey, is this a movie about somebody following me out to my car in the parking lot late at night? Fucking awesome! That's not what I think yeah. about every time I yeah. leave a bar. Anyway, yeah. it would all scare the shit out of me. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me put more ideas yeah. into my head of what's scary out there. But good callers, I... man. <laughs> Great callers. I um. Uh, first of all, meow meow. Thanks, guys, for calling. Uh, it's a, it's got to be a thing now, Kyle. For you, for everyone. I'm gonna bring you some cat ears in Florida for our live episode. I'll shove them up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> meow. <laughs> I uh, I think we did a good job of explaining why people like it today. Yeah, I guess there wasn't much to defend. We just yeah, got to I mean, talk about getting scared and why it's a great time. Well, yeah, and we, I mean, I guess we did talk about the controlled environment and the, uh, like, some of the, like, biological stuff that can happen. Yeah, I I think psychologically, if you're not prone to enjoying it now, I don't know if you could retrain yourself to enjoy yeah, it later. Yeah. But, but I will reiterate, man, scary video games, I forgot about that as a whole new thing. Like, I got to start playing, like, The Last of Us, and, like, there was some I was playing, and I'd be, like, up late at night, and I was like, too much! <laughs> <laughs> 45-year-old adult man playing a video game going, this is a bit much. I don't think, ooh, ooh, ooh let's go check the locks on the house again. <laughs> so if uh, if you had to, uh, for us, before we go out, if you had to suggest one scary video game, one scary movie, any of them, old, new, classic, doesn't matter, what are you going to go with for, for our listeners? For me? Oh, I, uh, Phasmophobia on the, on the PC. It's not like a super graphically intense game. It just it does such a great job that like you're a ghost hunter. You're like in the ghost hunting trailer out front and you get to pick like three or four items like a smudge stick or an infrared camera and you have to go in and you get information about what spirits haunting the house and you can play with other people and you're like, "All right, we got to like put this journal down on the counter and then leave the room and then come back in to see if it's written something in the journal and then you have to decide there's like eight or 10 different types of spirits it could be. Ooh. And so that's, that's the game of it is like, you have to determine what type of spirit it is that's haunting the house by using these different devices. Like, Oh, I have a thermometer to find if there's like cold spots in a room and you'll hear like, Oh, you have to provoke it a bit to get proof. But if you provoke it too much, it just captures you and kills you. Oh, so like God. all of a sudden like lights will be flashing on and off and like you have to like crouch and hide from it and stay st- like it's just it's good fun it's good scary uh, fun all right and movie wise i think uh uh the the ones i was talking about horror uh ha- hell house llc and uh out met host host from 2020 nice. i think the one on zoom got me pretty good the other night so yeah well, I don't play the video games, but uh, so I'll just say uh, I'll back yours up, mm-hmm. and then um, 
I liked Hereditary a few years ago. I know that was a big one, but yeah, yeah, it yeah. was very fun. Uh, Hail Payman, uh, and uh, that that movie, like what I was thought, it was it? so fun. What he just at the end of the movie, she just goes Hail Payman, and you're like, oh. what the fuck is going? What does that oh, mean? I think it's like a one of Satan's children or something like that. Oh, really? But it, yeah, but it was a fun one. I remember I'm looking it up right now. I saw it with uh, my buddy Sam Evans in the theater. He does not like scary movies. <laughs> and, and he just goes, well, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> and horror movies are funny, too. Dude. They're actually like there's some. Yeah, there, there's some great gags in them. I remember yeah. watching Signs in the theater, and with if you if you yeah. chop the ending off of Signs, it's a very well done, like creeping terror kind of movie. But when they're just look out the window, and one of the aliens is on the roof, and I saw it in the theater with my buddy Jesse, and he's not like a get scared kind of guy, but he's there to have fun. But nobody yeah. in the theater noticed it, and he just we're both sitting next to each other. He just turns, he's like. Was that thing on the fucking roof? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and we both just kept it to ourselves because we were scared. I love that. Yeah. Oh, hell uh, yeah, man. Good times, baby. Yeah. Good times. Let them know where they can find you, Kyle. Do a decent job plugging this week. <laughs> it's Kyle Kinane on the internet. Yeah, where are you going to be coming up? When does this come out? October boo, October thirty first. Uh, next week it'll be the Kansas Halloween. City Improv. <laughs> All right, the scariest comedy club in a mall. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, guys, uh, please check out and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would mean a lot to us. Uh, we'd really like to. Uh, rate review smash that like button yeah all that stuff you know what he's saying Uh, well I will be when this comes out on Halloween I will be on the road with Burt Kreischer in a number of cities and that man does not need any help selling tickets right now it is going well Uh, uh, but uh, I'll be at the come and take it festival in Houston on November 19th and 20th so please grab tickets for that and then um I think I'm trekking my way through Chicago, so maybe I'll see Which somebody days? there too. Oh, we got to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna well, be there twenty first and twenty second? <clears throat> I could be. Yeah. I was thinking. Of... Oh, Canaan's giving is happening. Canaan's giving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that might be fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Is it sold out already? Uh, I think Monday is, but I think or t- no Tuesday is. We added Monday, so there might be someone okay. on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, see, you can, they can also buy tickets for that. Come on. Yeah. All right. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks very much for listening, and um, uh, please uh, share this with your friends. We'll see you on the next one. This has been No Accounting for Taste on the All Things Comedy Network. The scariest owner is a man with red hair and an angry Irish accent from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs>